Hi everyone, and welcome to Coding with Tom. In this video, I want to cover some of the new and exciting changes in Blazor. Uh, in .NET 8 Preview 5, which just came out in the middle of June, what they've done is created a new Blazor template where their goal is to merge server and WebAssembly into one project. And you can learn more about this with some of the recent uh, videos that have been put out by Microsoft, what they're planning to do with Blazor. But now we actually get to try it out. At least Blazor server is functioning in Preview 5. And I'm going to show you how it works in this video. It's going to involve using the .add server components method and also the render mode server attribute. So the best way to show this is through a demo. So let me get started. Before I jump into the preview version, I'm going to go ahead and do the example that I'm going to do in the preview version using standard Blazor server so we can compare and see how it works differently. So let me create a Blazor server app project and I'll let it create it based on the uh, default settings. And it'll be .NET 7. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the project and I'll just run it real quick. If you haven't seen the default project in Blazor, it's basically three different things. They have a, uh, a home page, a counter page and a fetch data page, which retrieves fake weather data. So let me go out of this and I'm going to add a component to the home page. So let me go to pages. And you can see that there's index.razor. I'm going to add another component here. So let me make a custom component. It's going to be a razor component. I'm going to call it list component. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paste in some code that I've already written. It's pretty simple. It's a um, basically a list of items that are stored in a, a generic list of strings. Uh, and underneath the list of items, there's a text area to add an item. You type it in and you click the button and it adds it. So the input field is bound using bind value to the class member underscore add item. And then the button is bound to click add item, which is a, fu a function down here. Anytime you click, it takes whatever text is in the add item text field and it adds it to the list, which then gets dynamically bound up here to this for each loop and it reproduces this unordered list of items. I also have here in the on initialized async the addition of three items. So it'll start with some items. So I created the component. Let's actually reference it in the index razor page. So I'll put it under the survey prompt here and I'll just say list component and let's run it. So now that component should show up on the index page and here it is. So it has those three items I showed you. Now, if I add another item and hit click me, it adds it. So this isn't a blazer lesson per se, but I just wanted to make sure you were familiar with how blazer functions. Okay. To work with .NET 8 Preview 5, you're going to need to use Visual Studio 2022 Preview Edition. In addition to that, you're going to have to download .NET 8 Preview 5, and I'll include both of these links in the video's description. So let's go to Visual Studio Preview, and I'll make a new project. And I'll look for Blazor in the templates. You can see there's a template here called Blazor Web App. This is the new template that Microsoft will be using going forward. So let me hit next. And I'm just going to call it Blazor Web App. Use the default settings. And I'm going to run it just to show you how it's a little bit different from the other templates.
What they've done is they've left out the counter page in this template, but they still have the home page and the fetch data page. So let's take a look at it. It's really the same structure of, as an existing Blazor project, but let me go ahead and then add the component that I added to the last one so you can see how it functions a little differently. So let me right click, add Razor component, and I'll call it list component like we did before. And then I'll go ahead and paste the code in. Okay. So it's identical code. I don't have to explain it again. It's just this list of items and the ability to add them by clicking the button and typing in the text box. So I'm going to put that on the main page again by going over to index.razor and I'll include list components. Now let me run this. Okay, so it's on the home page and here it is. So let me try to make it work. I'll say item four and I'll hit click me and notice nothing is happening. By default, in the Blazor web app projects, Blazor is not turned on for any of the pages. That might sound strange, but there's a reason for it. What they're doing is they're allowing you to selectively pick and choose the areas of your pages that you'd like to use Blazor technology. You may not want your entire application to be Blazor server because that means everything about it is going to be updated and changed based on your interactivity using signal R messages that go back and forth to the server. There are a variety of reasons you wouldn't want to do this. One of the main reasons is uh, performance. You, your, some of your pages might be fairly static and you don't need to have a high degree of interactivity, or you can do it in a much simpler way. But anytime you need to do something in a component or a page that requires some more you know, involved code, which is the beauty of Blazor, server, being able to do a lot of that without having to code in JavaScript, you can say which particular components are going to use SignalR and server-side code instead of the entire application. It's no longer like a standard single-page application like it was before. It's going to be selective, so it's going to be based on the parts of the page you'd like to do it on. Now, to do this at all, you need to actually add something to the uh, program.cs. So that's the first thing we need to do. And what you need to do is under this line here that says builder services add razor components, you have to do dot add server components. This is going to allow us to designate certain components to use server-side rendering with SignalR Blazor technology. Otherwise, everything else is going to be standard ASP.NET Core razor. So everything you know from that will apply. But the parts that we designate as server-side rendering will use Blazor's SignalR messaging. Now, they're going to add WebAssembly later, but they haven't got to that yet. So they've started by providing the server-side rendering. So let me go back to my component. And what you can do is actually tag this component specifically to be a server-rendered Blazor component. To do that, all you need to do is add an attribute here at the top of the component. And it's called render mode server. So now that we've added the server components and we added this attribute, now our list component is going to render on the server and update via signal R. And I'll show you that working before. You can see it's working now. And we have a portion of our page, just this piece, that is using Blazor server. The rest of this web application is using just Razor, even the fetch data. The fetch data retrieves data once, and that's it. Once this is rendered, there's no interactivity. It doesn't have to go back to the server. So there's no Blazor going on here. Now, you can use Blazor components even on these Razor pages. 
but the problem is they will not be interactive until you put them on a page that has that attribute of render mode server. They will be adding other render modes as they include WebAssembly and I believe auto as well, that's going to allow it to start as laser server and download WebAssembly and then switch to WebAssembly once WebAssembly is downloaded. Uh, that's coming probably in future previews and definitely in the release version when they get to that point. Let me go back to the home page for a second. I want to show you one more thing. If I view the source of this page, you can see that the initial state of our component is right here. Standard HTML that was generated when we first hit the page uh, includes the three items. And it's surrounded by these comments with Blazor server, with pre-rendering IDs and descriptors. This is the metadata that the page needs to know that this portion of the page is going to be a Blazor server rendered page. So just this piece is going to get updated. Now we could have more than one of these pieces on the page, but this particular page has one Blazor server component. So this is how it's designated. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.